All right, Shalom. Shalom, giving all praise and glory and honors unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem and Kakwadash. No honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and bless to the whole for elect. <clears throat> this will be another update to the MOTB. And this here is um this here is uh, a news report um that has come out about this uh this guy here, this man, paralyzed man that's able to walk again. Now I I think I've done a video or two on this. Uh but there's some more information the spirit has just given me and revealed to me about uh not necessarily just this man here, but even the technology and the understanding of uh the prophecy in Revelation the thirteenth chapter. Um, at least to me and my understanding. Okay. And what John the Revelator saw and what is to be understood when we read Revelation 13 and 16. Okay. And I will say this, the, the, the MOTB is definitely, definitely no doubt no shadow of a doubt. I am sure, I'm sure, I'm a thousand percent sure, sure about Revelation 13 and 16 being uh, that, that, that word um, there, the, uh, you know, for Mark being Karagma. I am saying that it is definitely talking about this new um technology that will be put inside the human body okay i am sure that it's talking about the device that is putting that that will be put and is being put into the hands of people to pay for groceries and things okay and also as well uh the bci brain computer interface technology okay um one second i'm gonna do something here bear me one second all right Okay, so what we have here is a IG post from from the Amazing Mindset. Okay, and um, I think a brother shared this, so that's how I was able to go to this link here. So it says, uh, "Paralyzed man walks again, thanks to digital bridge." that wirelessly connects brain and spinal cord. Okay? Um, so now, when you scroll over or swipe over, you're going to see and hear exactly what this technology does. All right? So here I go. Okay? Okay, so it wants me to log in and watch again. Let's see if I can pull this up. One more again. Okay, here we Attached go. to the part of the brain that controls movement and another on his spinal cord, the two... You know what? Let me do this. All right. Here we go. Realized ...after a spinal cord injury was able to walk again. Doctors implanted what they call a digital bridge that put simply, helped the man transform his thought 
into action. One device was attached to the part of the brain that controls movement and another on his spinal cord. The two devices then able to relay his brain's desire to step forward into an electrical signal in the spinal cord that allowed him to do so. This technology is incredible. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC. All right, so that was it. All right, now you saw the video. He, you know, the man was able to actually use his thoughts to walk, you know, just as, you know, now for us subconsciously, you know, we walk based off of habit, you know, um, once we learn as an infant, you know, to walk, we pretty much been walking all our lives. So this man lost that ability to walk. Now, when you lose your ability to walk in certain motor functions, uh, you're losing that part of the brain or you have lost part of the brain that controls the function that's able to walk, right? You know, able to talk and things like that. Um, so now this technology, this brain computer face te technology, brain computer interface, BCI technology um, is pretty much designed to give these paraplegics, um, those people that are suffering from Alzheimer's, their cognitive functions back. OK. Using implantable um uh, computer chips to 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 um, provide them the correct electrical signals they need going from their brain, you know, to their limbs. All right, in order to to you know perform so-called normal everyday actions. Okay, and this technology has definitely grown. It's grown over time. Okay. Um, and he, and this is pursuant to the prophecies that we here at GMS speak on. Okay. Um, the prophecies talk about miracles being done by the beast, miracles being performed technology wise, whether it's, it's weaponry or just innovation period. Remember, you have something called the different revolutions of industry that have happened over the last 100 plus years, right? Uh, from the late 1800s to the early 1900s, that was known as the progressive era. And I mentioned this a few weeks back at camp, you know, where America was able to progress from pretty much the steam engine era to electricity. And then from the electricity era to uh, computers. And then from computers to the digital, you know, early 2000s. And now we're pretty much in the quantum era, you know, adding on to what happened in the 40s and 50s and 60s with computing. Okay. Um, so technology has advanced matter of fact so now I want to go into the scriptures because I'm going to show you how this technology with this man being able to go from being paralyzed to being walking to being able to walk again how that lines up with the prophecy in Revelation the 13th chapter um, and you know just through the spirit, how it lines up with what uh, Great Millstone ha has been saying for all these years. Okay? This has been revealed to us by the Lord. Remember, the secret things have been revealed to the prophets. Not everybody can get this. Even those that teach about us being Israelites, certain leaders, they don't understand unless the Lord reveal it unto them. So I want to go into the scriptures now. I got one poured up, but I want to go to first. Let's go to uh, um, uh, 
Let's go to uh, I was drawing a blank. Hold on one second. Oh yeah, okay. So let's go to Amos, the third chapter. All right, Amos chapter three, verse seven. It says, "Surely the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, would do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants, the prophets." Okay. So the Lord reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets, man. All right. We're not, um, let me see here. All right. It's not going to pop up here. All right. So, you know, we're not going to just speak the words that we come up with. No, the Lord reveals the secrets unto the prophets, things that everybody, you know what a secret is. Everybody doesn't know all the information there is to know but certain people are privy to certain things okay so that's number one all right the next scripture that i want to get to understand that there are, are, are even among so the prophets are going to know things that not every israelite knows the israelite prophets are going to know things that every israelite is not going to know just because you know and understand you're an Israelite doesn't mean you're going to know all the secrets. You have to be of the servants, the prophets. Okay? All right? Um, so now, let me see here. Okay, and I brought this out in the video I did yesterday. Have a cool the second chapter Habakkuk 2 and 3 for the vision which vision is another term for you know uh, prophecy because prophets see visions and then they speak those things which become prophecy before they happen it says for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak, meaning what? It's going to become manifest. Okay? It's going to make itself known. But at the end it shall speak. And who's going to speak? The prophets, right? And I went to that word speak. And it was talking about, you know, breathing, the breath. You know, speaking, talking. So basically at the end, the, at the appointed time, the prophets are going to speak the vision and not lie. So there's going to be an Israelite group of men, a group of prophets that are not going to lie when they talk about the vision of certain prophecies written in the scriptures. And this particular prophecy we're talking about is what is written in the book of Revelation. All right. They're revealing, pulling back the veil, pulling back what was hidden. The secret. We're revealing the secret. That's what, you know, Revelation is really is pulling, is revealing the secret. That Yahweh Shai had given first to John, and then now the understanding is given unto us today. So revealing the secret of what's to come. It says, and not lie. Though it tarry, the word tarry means to wait, okay, or, or, or to linger. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. I mean, there's going to come a time when... The prophets are going to speak certain things way before they happen. And though it may be years before it actually takes place, the prophets are going to say these things. And eventually what they say, it is going to happen. So that's the time we're in now. So now, let's go to Revelation, the 13th chapter. Okay? And I want to show... The hopeful elect out there something which some of us may know, some of us may not know. But using that particular point that I use with the paralyzed man, I want to make this clear. I want to make this clear in this video. So this is Revelation 13 and 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive, right, this here, M-A-R-K, in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay? 
And I just want to go into this verse. All right. Verse 16. It says foreheads. Okay. So now I went into this word forehead. All right. This word forehead in the Greek is the word metopon. Strong's G, 3359, metopon. Metopon. Okay, metopon. So now, using that in the Bible, what does it say? Metopon. The space between the eyes, the forehead. Okay? The forehead, which when we read that that verse, that scripture, okay, it says foreheads, right? So there's going to be a karagma in the forehead, all right? Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that word too, okay? Is it going to be in your right hand or in your forehead? Which is the Greek word is charagma. Strong's G, 5480. Charagma. Charagma. Right, charagma for Mark. And what is it? Stamp and printed Mark. The Mark branded upon horses. Now, when you brand a horse... You don't make a horse sin like what General Nate of um, IUIC is saying these days. It's sin upon, it's sin in all its forms. Before it was sin in all its forms, in all its forms, it was an embargo. It was Christianity. You know, they're not, you know, being wishy, you know, changing up about what the haragma is. But when you look it up, it's talking about something physical. You have to physically stamp something and imprint something, you know. For example, uh, 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 when you buy a car, right, you see the emblem of whatever make of that car company is on, on the, uh, you know, the car. You know, decal, right? But then, you know, in certain places on the car and the vehicle, you might see that same emblem imprinted into the seats. You know, you get a BMW and then you, you know, you look into the car and then you see the emblem of the BMW somewhere in the car, like on the seats or the steering wheel. Right. Oh, like now earlier, I just crumped my car up, you know, to get some air. The emblem of the, the car company is imprinted on the steering wheel. And below that, what do you see? You have the imprint where it says airbag. They have to physically imprint that on the steering wheel so it can be there pretty much permanently, right? Just like when a farmer or a cattle rancher wants to 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 you know mark his horses and let other cattle ranchers know, hey, you know, these particular breed of mares, horses, stallions, they belong to me. He takes a branding iron and physically brands that horse, okay, with that branding iron on his uh haunches, on his hind side. Okay? Oh, that's Farmer John's horse. It's a big J on the um, side of the horse, you know. They'll take shears or clippers and cut around it, right? And then they'll brand it, and then, you know, so you can see it more clear. Just look up a YouTube video on branding horses. So now the definition says something carved, sculpture, graven work. So you have to physically engrave something. So that is what the karagma is. It's a physical thing. It's not spiritual. So these other Israelite groups that saying that this physical thing is spiritual, they're wrong. 
okay? The karagma in itself, in its, it is a physical thing, all right? So now that brings me back to this point, dealing with the forehead, okay? Which we brought out was metopon. So now this is what I did. I went to Google and I typed in what body part is behind the forehead. Because didn't it say that they're going to put it in your forehead? So that means they have to put it, you know, behind your forehead. So it says, as the name suggests, the frontal lobe. See, now it's finna get. And now things are going to get real interesting. It says, as the name suggests, the frontal lobe is at the front of your head. It is the section of your brain just behind your forehead. You could do the same exact Google search that I did. Matter of fact, I did it. I did it here on. Okay. All right. So the spirit is revealing this to the Lord of service, the prophets. All right. So now it says, what does the forehead part of the brain do? As a whole, the frontal lobe is responsible for higher cognitive functions, such as memory, dealing with Alzheimer's, right? If you got Alzheimer's, you lose your memory, okay? There is a, a, a disease that attacks your frontal lobes to where as certain people get older, they get dementia, okay? And Alzheimer's. It says emotions, impulse control, problem solving, social interaction, and motor function, okay? Let's see, what are three possible side effects might a person have if their frontal lobe was damaged? Here, okay, damage to the frontal lobe may cause a variety of effects, such as impaired muscle movements, not able to use your legs, personality changes, and impulsive behavior. Fortunately, fortunately many individuals are able to recover functions affected by frontal lobe damage and improve the quality of life for some people okay yeah forehead injury cause brain brain damage okay so now okay let's go to the browser Right, or just the area behind the the forehead, and all of this is dealing with you know forehead and your um your um frontal lobes. Okay. As the name suggests, the frontal lobe is at the front of your head. It. The section of your brain just behind your forehead. Okay. Um. I mean, I pretty much made the point. Okay, I pretty much made the point. So now. News. Go to news. You know what, let's let's do this here. Let's go to let's let's do this here.
All right, let's look this up. Right? Good morning, America. Artificial intelligence used in medical procedure to help paralyzed man walk. So now you can see where. Uh, this is from May 25th, 2023. The hopeful year of all the prophecies coming to pass. We've seen a lot of prophecies coming to pass. The chariots, the UFOs, the angels, right? These uh, uh, sea hips, okay? Um, here we go from the New York Times. So I I could probably read this now. Some with the with the new uh with the New York Times you gotta you gotta um, sign up. It says brain implants allow paralyzed man to walk using his thoughts. So let's see what is going on with this guy. Gert Jan Oscom was living in China in 2011. When he was in a motorcycle accident that left him paralyzed from the hips down. Now, with the combination of devices, scientists have given him control over his lower body again. Okay. Um, more than a year after the implant was inserted, he has retained these abilities. And as Ashley showed signs of neurological recovery, walking with crutches, even when the implant was switched off, that would be considered a miracle. So when they push this technology on the people in the world, it's going to seem as if it's, 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 it's going to catapult the status of Esau and this world to the level of a god, you know, his scientists. Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to be able to do <coughs> things, um, you know, like he's the most high. Okay. Jocelyn Block, a neuroscientist at the University of Lausanne, who placed the implant in Mr. Oscom at it. It was quite science fiction in the beginning for me, but it became true today. That lines up with the scripture that I read earlier. Okay. Though it tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come. You know. The prophecy is, you know, the vision is for a, 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 an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. So years prior, it seemed like using technology to make paralyzed people walk again it seemed like what science fiction right that's what these other israelite groups would say oh these gms guys are talking about no 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 but now it's coming true okay it says and not lie did not the prophecy say it was not going to lie but gms has been proven to not be liars all right um And this takes time. In 2016, a group of scientists led by Dr. Cortine was able to restore the ability to walk in paralyzed monkeys. And another helped a man regain control of his paralyzed hand. Okay. Last year, more advanced brain stimulation procedures allowed paralyzed subjects to swim, walk, and cycle within a single day of treatment. Okay. Let me get another scripture. Let's go to, and this is what I wanted to get, Daniel chapter 12 and verse, what is it, 3? Daniel 12 and 3. No, I'm sorry, 4. Day of 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. But then we read in Habakkuk that at the time of the end it shall speak. 
So the end is now when the prophets are able to open the book, understand the vision and the prophecies, and then speak those prophecies, such as what I'm doing now. All right? Now we can understand these scriptures and not have to rely on these Christian pastors and apologists like vocab to lie to us. Now we have men that are feeding us with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So now at the time of the end, the book is open. Yahweh shall open that understanding pursuing the revelation, the fifth chapter. It says, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, knowledge has been increased. We had the Industrial Revolution. We had the, 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 the Progressive Era. We had the Age of Enlightenment. You know, once Esau came into power, he was learning different things. Technology has increased since the early 2000s. You know, the Digital Era. The quantum age, you know? Knowledge has been increased. That prophecy is now manifesting itself. It's speaking now, okay? 2016, they was make, able to make monkeys, paralyzed monkeys walk. Now, 2023, they're able, less than 10 years later, they're able to make man walk. That's a miracle, man. Okay? Um, come on, man. It, it's just so much more, man. So much more. And you can see this device he has on his head, you know, and, and this device, I believe, is just recording the information, you know, from his brain activity. Um, I mean, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to bring this information out, pursuant to what I read um, about the forehead. Okay, about the forehead and the metal pond. Okay, dealing with the karagma. Okay. Metal pond. And this is a physical thing. Because this man's frontal lobes were damaged. How do we know it was his frontal lobes? Because the frontal lobes control, control motor movement making them paralyzed, okay? So if you don't have, if you don't have um, proper motor movement control, that means your frontal lobe is, is, is damaged. So you, so you can't become paralyzed, you can't walk. So what did they do? They went, so they went behind his forehead Okay, to the part of the frontal lobe that controls your his motor functions. Put that device there. And now they can monitor this man being able to walk again. Okay. So this is what John saw which is revealed in Revelation, the 13th chapter, 16 and 17 as well. But right here, we're talking about the 16th verse dealing with the forehead. He saw these scientists able to take this technology and make people. Remember, this is a mirror. This didn't happen 100 years ago, 150, 200, 2000 years ago. Imagine being a soldier in King David's army you know, and your legs were taken out from under you. You can't walk, you know, and you got to be taken back. But then, you know, you can be healed. 
Like, wait, you know, we just saw the enemy, you know, the Philistines take your legs out. But then now you're able to at least walk again. That would be considered a miracle. So that's why John was able to see it like that. But now we know that it's technology that is able to do these things. Now we know the power of Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Shai had the power to make uh, um, the man walk with palsy and all of that. And different people that had the palsy, right? Even the apostles. When you read the book of Acts. Okay? But this is Esau's version, which is not spiritual, it's physical. Dealing with the left hand side, the vibration of Satan, he's able to use his technology to appear as if he's God and do these things. You know, so with that, I'm going to end it there. All praises go to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Kakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And um, we're definitely living in, in the time of Revelation 13, 16 and 17 coming to pass. Now it's speaking. And soon this technology is going to be made mandatory. And if you take it, you'll be destroyed. So don't take it. Have faith in Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Remember, Yahweh Shai can do these things. And so will those that follow him. We're going to be able to do the worst that he did and greater. Shalom.